Boys and girls, welcome to Sabbath School. Hi, everybody. Hope you had a good week, and we're going to have a good time learning about Jesus today and learning from the Old Testament about Samuel. So uh, Miss Julie might tell you about that in a second. But we are going to open with a word of prayer, and we'll get started with our great Sabbath School. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for another chance to get together and enjoy Sabbath School. We pray, Lord, that you will... Uh, Teach us good things, that you will help us to enjoy this time, and you'll help us to listen very, very uh, carefully so that we can become the people you want us to be and make you proud. Thank you for this time, and we look forward to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So what are we going to do today, Miss Julie? Well, first off, let's look at our memory verse, okay? 1 Samuel 7, 15. Will you say that with me? 1 First Samuel, Samuel 7, 7 15. 15. And here's what it says. Samuel continued as Israel's leader all the days of his life. Okay, you want to say that? Samuel, Samuel continued, continued as Israel's, Israel's leader all the days of his life. life. Or boys and girls, remember last week, little Samuel had to, he kept hearing God's voice and didn't know what, who it was or anything. And Eli, remember, said, Samuel, listen, I think the Lord's talking to you. And that's when he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is hearing you. So now Samuel has grown up and he's now acting as a prophet in the land with the Israelites. But sometimes the Israelites did not do the right thing. But no matter what they did, no matter what they did, Samuel kept on doing what God wanted him to do. And he served God the rest of his life. So he chose a song today. Follow Jesus. Anywhere you lead me, I will follow. So we're going to sing it twice through. And then actually, I think we'll just sing it twice through. Okay. okay. How's okay. that? Okay. Okay. You ready? Here we go. Maybe you don't know this, but it's really simple. And it's very short. So I want you to pay attention. Here we go. Follow Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow. Follow Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads, I'll go. Try again. Okay, here we go. Follow Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow. Follow Jesus. I will follow Jesus anywhere he leads I'll go boys and girls let me ask you something when you're reading these words up here will you really follow him wherever he takes you or will you pray and then close your eyes open your ears and see if you can hear his voice it may not be audible you know like speaking out loud but you know what God works through the Holy Spirit working and telling us what we should do when we listen and when we obey him. So I hope you remember these words. We'll do it just one more time, okay? okay. All okay. right? Here we go. Follow Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow. Follow Jesus, I will follow Jesus. Anywhere Enjoy Sabbath school, and we'll see you on the other side. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, guys. Hi, kids in Wenatchee. My name is Sharon, and I'm talking to you all the way from Texas. I wanted to tell you this morning about a little friend of mine. Now, her name is Belle, and she has a pink nose, and she has pink all around her eyes, and she has pink ears, and she has a long tail, kind of a long tail. What do you think she might be? I think I heard somebody say a horse. No, she's not as big as a horse. Let's see, did I hear somebody else say, oh, she's a bunny? Well, that's a good, a good guess, although bunnies don't have long tails. I'll tell you what Belle is. Belle is a long-haired chihuahua. Isn't she cute? She's very small. 
and she's very cute. Miss Bell belongs to Mr. Mark and Miss Lori. And when she was a puppy, when they first got her, when she was a puppy, they lived down in far, far, far east Texas, way down south, almost in Louisiana. You'll have to look up these places on the map. Uh, and they lived down there, and they, Mr. Mark is the administrator at a nursing home. That means he's the boss. A nursing home is a place where uh, folks sometimes go to live if they've been really sick and they need some extra care before they go home. Sometimes they're pretty sick or sometimes they're, they need extra, extra help and so they stay there. And uh, lots of very sweet people live in nursing homes. Perhaps you've been to visit uh, sometime at a nursing home. And when you live in a nursing home, you don't always get to see your family all the time. And sometimes you get kind of lonely. And it's sometimes it's hard. Well, when Belle was a puppy, and Mr. Mark and Miss Lori were at the nursing home down there in far southeast Texas, they Belle was just too little as a puppy to leave at home, so they would take her with them. Now, Miss Lori had a desk and a little office. She worked uh, in the office at the nursing home. And so she would take Belle's little bed and she would put it right beside her desk. And puppies, kind of like babies, sleep a lot. Well, when Belle got a little bit bigger, she got a little bit braver and she started, she slip out of her bed and she'd go out in the hall and she'd look around a little bit. And sometimes the folks who live at nursing homes go out of their, they have rooms, and sometimes they go out of their rooms and they sit in the hall. And so Belle started going up to folks who were sitting in the hall. And she would visit and they would put down their hands and she would go to them and she would let them pet her and they would just love her. Lots of those folks at some time in their lives probably had dogs and love dogs and don't get to have one now. So Belle would go up and let them pet her. Pretty soon she got even more comfortable and she would let them pick her up because she's very small. Um, if you put your hands out, oh, she's kind of the size of a, yeah, kind of a medium sized loaf of bread, but she has four legs. Um, and she would let them pick her up and put, them, put her in their laps. And she would just sit there and they would pet her so kindly and she loved it. And pretty soon she'd get down and she'd go off to the next person and she would do the same thing. She visited, she got to where she visited up and down all the halls in the nursing home visiting with people. Then she would go back to her little bed and she would take a little nap, maybe eat a little lunch. And then she liked to go out into the lobby of the nursing home because after lunch and maybe after a nap, the, there were ladies in the nursing home who liked to come down to the big lobby with the big TV because there was a program they liked to watch on TV. And they would sit there on the couch in the lobby eating popcorn. Guess who liked to join them? Belle! Belle would come down to the lobby about the time the ladies gathered there and she would jump up on the couch with them and she would watch their show with them and eat popcorn. And when it was done, she would go back to her little bed and then it would be about time to, for Mr. Mark and Miss Lori to take her home with them. Miss Bell was a missionary. Now, she's a retired missionary. She doesn't go so much anymore. She st stays home more. But she was a missionary. And she was doing a kind thing, visiting with the folks at the nursing home and cheering them up. Now, I've got to tell you, Miss Bell is not big. Her head, if you put your little hands together like that, that's probably bigger than her head is. Maybe your hands. My hands are bigger than yours. But if you put your hands together, that's about the size of Belle's head. And in that little head, there's a little brain just about that big. And inside that little rib cage, there's a little bitty heart. But inside that little bitty brain 
and that little bitty heart, Jesus put love for those folks there at the nursing home and made her kind to the people there. Now, I'm thinking that your head is bigger than this and your brain is certainly bigger than this and your heart is certainly bigger than Belle's. And if Jesus put love and kindness in that little bitty brain and that little bitty heart of Bell's, just think how much more love and how much more kindness he's put in your heart. So you can be a missionary too. I know these are times when we can't get out so much. But he will show you, Jesus will show you, people you can love, people you can be kind to, and you can be a missionary just like little Belle. I hope you have a happy Sabbath. Bye-bye. Jesus has us in his hands, the whole world in his hands, just like I'm holding this ball. Let's go. He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 Well, we little baby. Got the wee little baby in his hands. He's got the wee little baby in his hands. He's got the wee little baby. If you can see, the, it's located in the Ukayali region of Peru, which reminds me of a T-Rex dinosaur. <laughs> but Pucallpa itself is located kind of in like the, I don't know, in between the neck and the, the eyes. Like it's right there in the throat region. You can see. Um, it's also right along the Ukayali River, which is a tributary to the Amazon. If you ask Brazilians, they will tell you the Amazon begins in Brazil. But if you ask Peruvians, they'll tell you the Amazon begins in Peru. So I don't actually know where it starts. But <laughs> the Ucayali River is a ma major tributary to the Amazon. So it's right in that region. This, this is a more project. Um, the name is kind of a pun because it stands for Ambassadors Medical Outreach and Relief. But the word amor in Spanish means love. So more projects does several different things. Mostly we have our clinics. We have two different types of clinics. We have our building on the compound where people will come. We have a dentist office where we can do dental operations. We have a doctor who will come and prescribe medicine for patients. And um, just sometimes we can do emergency help. But we also have a different kind of clinic where we will pack up all of our medications and we will go out to um, different neighboring churches and we will bring medicine to the people. Um, so those are what we spend most of our time doing. We occasionally will do home visits where you can see in the other picture here, we're taking vitals for a gentleman who is bedridden with bed sores. Um, one of the things we do is we go around the town, um, go around our neighborhood, um, giving just health messages and helping them learn how to properly take care of hygiene. A lot of them do not realize that it's very important to wash your hands. Often, um, sometimes we need to explain that it's important to keep any bathroom areas away from kitchen areas um, and to keep your trash covered. These are just really basic things that a lot of them do not have the understanding of. So we would make PowerPoints. This is one that I made. And we would go around the neighborhood. We'd kind of gather um, information to see where they needed help most in, and then we'd help guide them through that. And then when we were done with, done with helping them explain uh, understand these, we would often give them Bible studies and just help them to know more about Jesus. So what was my job? I have a very hard time explaining this because it was an, it's not a clear-cut answer. I went down to be a journalist. 
Um, because we're a nonprofit clinic and all of our funds are, are gathered from people here in the States, people need to know what's happening to their money. So I went down there so that I could be a part of the culture, I could understand what was going on, I could take pictures and write stories. I kept up on my blog a lot, which many of you guys have read. I also wrote other stories for Dr. Gowley. I would send them to him, and he would put them in his newsletter to send to the donors, just so people knew what was going on with their money and that they knew that, that they know they're helping. So I spent a lot of time taking pictures of cute babies and stuff like that. This is our dental office here. I also helped out in the clinic, mostly with pharmacy, because for those of you who know me, I don't do bodily fluids well. It doesn't go down well. So I pretty much just helped with the medicine and triage, occasionally fit, fitting glasses. All right, I also spent a lot of time teaching English to the younger children. Um, near the end of the year, I taught a little bit more challenging grammar, but you know, it's surprisingly difficult to teach Spanish grammar if you ever tried it, particularly to people who don't even speak English in, as their first language. I, I cannot tell you how many times they would ask me questions and I'd think, uh, I could tell you the answer, but I have no re clue why that's correct. <laughs> so mostly I just taught words to the little kids. Um, I also spent a ton of time just playing with the people, learning the culture, learning the English, uh, I mean learning Spanish. I can't English today apparently. Um, eating lots of food, hanging out with pathfinders. Um, in Latino countries, on general, they tend to have a very people-oriented culture versus a task-oriented culture, which is what we have here in the States. So to them, productivity is not as important as simply spending time with the people you are with. So if I didn't end up getting to something that I had on my docket for that day for my job, it was okay as long as I spent the time loving on the people I was around, which was, Difficult to get used to you, because we are much more task oriented than I think people realize we are, but at the same time, super meaningful and really wonderful. This was the Pathfinder Campery, and my first one in Pathfinders. I'm pretty sure we camped through a monsoon. I'm not, I mean, I'm a Montana girl, I'm not used to storms, so it probably wasn't that way, but it was intense. It, uh, we had our tents outside. And then it started to rain, and we all grabbed our tents and we ran into this church here, which, as you can see, does not have full walls. So we camped, we put our, our tents in the church, so we had, um, like, the, we had the shelter, but the wind was still blowing the rain through the walls. And it was an adventure. It was very cold. But we actually stayed pretty dry, which was impressive. So that was a unique experience. But we had fun. The kids there absolutely love Pathfinders. It is very popular, and within the city of Pucallpa, I was very impressed at how many Pathfinders there were. I don't remember exactly, but we had one event where all of the different clubs from all over the city came, and it was a large event. Um, the picture there at the end, uh, the larger picture was on the Sunday we had all decided to go mud bogging or to crawl through the mud basically. I had stayed clean for a while and I was taking pictures at this point and the kids all came up to me and said, hermana broke un abrazo, which means a hug. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> but later they convinced me to get into the mud myself. So I was nearly as muddy as they were by the time everything was over. We, over the course of the time that we were there, I think we rescued nine kittens and raised them to adulthood. Well, some of them didn't quite make it, but we tried. Um, and this particular one is, oh, let's see, this particular one is Mr. Bingley. He was my kitty. And if you know, if you have known me for very long, you will know that I don't like cats. We have one at home that has just really been quite the character, and we have not gotten along well. And so I went down to Peru thinking, I do not like cats. <laughs> and then one day, I had been there for about a month and a half, and I gotten up one morning. And I came back to my room a few minutes later, and one of Henry's twins handed me this teeny tiny little ball of orange fluff. And he said, this is your kitty, and you will pay me one soul. Like, you don't have a choice. This is your cat, and I will get the money, which he ended up giving back later. I think his parents made him do that. But um, <laughs> So this was my kitty after that. And I'd never, I don't think I'd ever told anybody this, but in my brain I had always said, I don't want a cat. I absolutely, positively do not want a cat. But if I ever get a cat, which I won't, it will be a little orange kitty that I had from the time it was a, a kitten. So he handed me this little orange kitty and I was like, uh-oh. And I was kind of, kind of smitten from then on. 
Mr. Bingley is one of the sweetest, most snuggly, funny cats I've ever met. Um, and he absolutely loves the dogs. He'll just hang out. All the rest of the cats would, would um, hiss at the dogs, but he would just go up and play with them. Dogs and cats are everywhere because they do not exactly believe in the concept of spaying and neutering their animals. So you have puppies and kittens all over the place, which is very cute, but can cause problems because the animals get very sickly, they're not well taken care of, they're not well fed, and they're very diseased. Um, but they're pretty cute. This particular dog <laughs> puppy that is on the, I think for you it would be the left, left side, um, the little brown one with no hair, that is what you call a perro peruano. It's a special kind of breed of dog that is only in Peru, and they are hairless. And if you thought there was anything, there was nothing uglier than a hairless cat, you would be right. But hairless dogs are not much better. Um, they're actually pretty cute when they're puppies, but there was one I so wish I had taken a picture because the memory is seared in my head. I saw this one Pedro Peruano, and he was much larger. He had the same dark brown skin with no hair, except for he had a little tuft of hair right on the top of his head. And it is the, it looks like somebody bleached it and did not do a good job. It is so bad. <laughs> so bad. Um, these are some of the animals I saw. Like I said, I didn't see a ton of wild ones, but they do love their pets there, which is surprising. The, the monkey on the left is a mini monkey. He is full grown. And they brought him to the clinic one time. They, people would just bring their animals to clinic. When they needed medical attention or medicine, they'd just bring their animals with them. So this little one came to clinic, and he fit in the palm of my hand. I have a picture of him. This one's not me. I do have a picture of me holding him, but um, this is a different one. Um, Miguel was one of the kids who lived really close to the clinic, and he would come over and help us all the time. He was always eating uh, Henry's family, hanging out with everybody on the compound. He was one of my... One of my favorite kids, he was always ready to help, always ready to laugh. I've never laughed so hard in my life. But he loved animals, and so periodically he would bring animals to the compound with him. And this owl in the middle, that's an owl, that he wrapped up in a towel and brought to the compound, and he let me hold it. And then the parakeets also came to clinic one day with their people. Christmas is an adventure. It is very different from what it is here, but it is very fun. Um, they have, I can't remember, and I forgot to look up what it's called. It's like a chocolate, cho it has something to do with the word chocolate, but they're basically these big parties that they have all the time around Christmas time for the kids, and they bring these huge pots of hot chocolate, and it is really good hot chocolate. Um, and then they, they bring panaton, which is basically fruit bread, I mean fruit cake, except for three times worse, if that's possible. And it, ugh, it's so bad, but they love it. You give a Peruvian panaton, and they, there's a 95% chance they will love you forever. I don't understand. But anyway, at these parties, they would have these big things of hot chocolate, and they'd give it out to the kids, and then they'd give pieces of panaton out to the kids. And they'd play a bunch of games, play a bunch of music. And then at the end, Papa Noel would come, and he would hand out parasite medication to all of the kids. The Brock family, they have a retreat for missionaries about 25 to 30 minutes outside of Pucopa. Um, they have a really beautiful southern farmhouse that they have built from scratch. And um, Pucopa has a lot of American missionaries in the area, and any one of them are just happy to, uh, are welcome to come by. The Brock family, anytime that they need some conversation in English, or if they need just a home away from home, a retreat day, some American southern food, they were welcome to come to the Brock's house. And so we went there a couple times. My first time was around Thanksgiving. And let me tell you, I have never had such amazing Southern Thanksgiving food in my life. So amazing. Um, but they have, they have Sid the Sloth and they have a little monkey. Sid does not like the monkey and he'll try to swat him. But the monkey is very mischievous and I cannot for the life of me remember his name. I wanna say it's Dexter, but I don't quite remember. But he liked my phone and I have a pop socket on my phone that pulls up and down, and he thought that was just the bomb.com. So he would steal my phone, and he'd just play with it. And, you know, a monkey running around the, the house with a phone is not exactly my idea of a great time. So one time I tried to keep it from him. He came to grab it, and I held on to it, and he did not like that. And he bit me hard. He, he liked that phone. So I had several takeaways, of course, from this year. But one of them that 
really stuck with me was the fact that God uses so many of us in so many different areas and in different countries. I was technically this year the one with the term missionary, but there were so many other people who worked, who ministered to me while I was there. Um, the, for instance, the Brocks, they, they were missionaries in Pucopa. They had a little bit of a different ministry than many of the ones there. They ministered to the missionaries. Um, and I rem- remember feeling very, very warmed and welcomed by them. And that was really a blessing. So if there is anything that I want you guys to take away from this talk, which of course I want you to have a better understanding and appreciation of the Peruvian people because they're just fun and so awesome. But I also really, really want you guys to take to heart that each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards to God's grace, of God's grace in its various forms. Okay, ready? Let's do Give me your oil in my lamp. Good morning, boys and girls. This week we have another lesson about Samuel called Samuel's Service. God's people, the Israelites, had started worshiping the idols of their neighbors, the Philistines. One of these idols was Baal, the Philistine god of thunder and rain. Many Israelites had little idols of Baal in their houses. God sent Samuel to talk to the people. Remember, the name Israel means ruled by God, he began, and he told them, turn back to God with all your hearts. Throw away your idols. Give yourselves to God and serve him only. The people of Israel listened to Samuel. They broke all their idols and they began to worship God again. Come meet at Mizpah, Samuel told the people. I will pray to the Lord for you there. So the people gathered at Mizpah. We have sinned against the Lord, they admitted. We are sorry. We are really, really sorry. The Philistines heard that the Israelites had gone to Mitzpah. Let's go attack them, they said. So the Philistine rulers gathered their soldiers and they marched to Mitzpah. The Philistines are coming! The Philistines are coming! A young man may have shouted as he ran up the dusty road. The Israelites looked at one another with wide eyes. Ask the Lord to save us from the Philistines. They begged Samuel. Samuel prayed for the safety of the Israelites. Suddenly, there was a sound of loud thunder from heaven. It echoed from the mountains. It shook the air. It rumbled, rolled, and it boomed. The Philistines were frightened. They dropped their swords and their spears, and they ran away as fast as they could go. The Philistines thought their god Baal was the god of thunder. So the true god 
he used thunder to show that only he had power and an idol did not. Samuel put a large rock for a monument on the road to Mizpah. He wanted the people of Israel to always remember how the true God had saved them. For years to come, children would ask, why is that big rock there? And the parents would tell their children the wonderful story. Samuel led Israel for the rest of his life. He served the Lord all of his days. Do you want to serve God too? How can you and I serve God today? Have a wonderful week, children. Bye-bye. Oh, that was a great lesson we just learned, wasn't it? We learned so many other good things, good lessons today. It was great having you at Sabbath School today with us. And let's close with a word of prayer, Miss Julie. Yeah, will you bow your heads with me? Father God, I want to thank you so much for this absolutely gorgeous Sabbath day. Thank you for the week that we've had, too. And Lord, as we listen to you, help us to be like Samuel. No matter what happens, no matter if people are crazy around us, Help us to take that time to listen to you, to obey your voice, and to follow you wherever you lead us. Thank you so much for these Bible stories, and thank you for all the people who put this Sabbath school together for us. We want to thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right, everybody. Have a great rest of the Sabbath. Bye, okay, guys. Bye-bye.